What's up, everybody? This week's Roscoe's Reef episode is going to cover the Reef Conservation Society frag swap held at that pet place, that fish, fish place, at 237 Centerville Road in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Just pulling into the parking lot, you get an idea of just how big this building is. But just from the front, looks are deceiving, and you'll notice once you get inside just how really immense this place is. The fish room has over 500 species of tropical and freshwater fish and inverts, and it also has hundreds of exotic corals and frags that you can even order online. The selling floor houses everything that you could possibly want, as well as sand, food, tanks, anything you need for the hobby they have. Just down from this acrylic tank with its artificial insert lies probably the first thing my son right here in the red shirt found was Pirate's Cove. Pirate's Cove is a stingray petting tank where all the patrons are encouraged by the signage that you see on the pond to pet the stingrays as they swim on by. This tank rivals anything that I've seen in some public aquariums that have the same petting uh, policy. And as you can see, coming up, another close-up of the sign that encourages you to pet the stingray. This 120-gallon reef tank was designed by Nicholas Brown. He did the rockscape to mimic a natural reef where the two arching islands form a natural shelter for its fish and inhabitants, as demonstrated by that beautiful tank. Now, as you look around the tank, you notice that there's corals, yes, but probably the first thing that catches your eye is not only this tank, but first of all, these bubble tip anemones are gorgeous, and this is the biggest frog spawn that I have ever seen in my life. Now alongside the tank is a plaque dedicated to its designer, and giving you a little bit more detail about it. The other thing you're gonna notice is right down from it is probably just about every size tank you could imagine, except for the really monster one. After taking in the selling floor and paying a donation of $10, you were allowed entry into the frag swap area. The first thing you notice is all the blue tanks lit by LEDs and all the different vendors showing off their frags. The first thing that impressed me was all the different frags from SPS to LPS. Anything you wanted was pretty much here. Even anemones, sea fans, and the like. Everyone was very friendly and willing to answer any question, no matter whether it was an experienced reefer asking it or a new reefer asking it. You can just see your eyes pop it as you make your way from vendor to vendor, looking at all the colors under the blue lights. Here's the sea fans coming up. And next to this vendor was where I spent my first day, uh, moments of the day and picked up four frags from Fisher Hicks and his wife. There were tons of people and just a great day in general. As you made, as I made my way around, I was actually looking for Billy Pipes. Uh, coming up is Dan from Coral Lust, and his display was great. It looked like a jewelry display. This is the area where the lunch was, and. Again, more corals than you could imagine. Once my day was done and I was getting ready to leave, I noticed this huge tank up towards the front exit. There was no one around to really ask the dimensions of the tank, but I automatically saw this powder blue tank swimming by and had to record it. The right there in the right corner were two of the largest bubble corals I've ever seen, and just had to take a shot looking down from the end of the tank taking in everything that this tank had to offer. A lot of anemones resided in this tank. And it was just a beautiful thing to see. Now making it home, I took out all the corals that I had purchased and sat down at the table and prepared to acclimate them and get them ready to be put in my tank and you can notice my wife while we were out decorated the house for Halloween 
These are the corals from Fish of Hex. This is the pink Setosa coral. This coral, I forgot the name of, and Hex, if you can, just leave a comment on what the name of that coral is. There's some zoas. And finally, I have my Monty Cat. Now, from one of the other vendors, I picked up some Eagle Eye Zoas and also some Fire and Ice Zoas. Sorry, Billy, I didn't get them from you. But uh, I noticed that some of the Zoas had come off the frag plug, but that was an easy fix. Here is the, the difference, and here's Coral Lust frag that I got from him. It's a beautiful Duncan Coral, and the packaging is really, really great on this. The, you can't deny that it's a nice display piece and draws your eyes right to them. I'll put his information down below for people to check him out as well as anybody mentioned in this video. Um, now, what I do to acclimate my corals besides acclimating them um, to the salinity in my water, which I found out was in these containers was a little bit higher than mine, I dip them in Revive and get them ready for my tank. Here's the next day after it being acclimated. Here's the Duncan from Coral Lust, which are awesome. And then here's my Monty Cap. This camera does it no justice. This is a gorgeous piece. Moving to the left, here is the pink Setosa. Now, this is like neon pink in my tank. Again, there'll be some close-ups coming up, but this just glows in my tank under the blue. There's that piece that I need the name for. The polyps coming out, which I'm very happy about. You know I had to get that line in. Here's the Zoes from Fish of Hex, and they are gorgeous. And here's the Zoes from the vendor. I'm sorry I did not get this person's name. There's the eagle eyes. And the plug that had the fire and ice had two different corals mixed in. And they're really nice. They had some character to it. They go on this, they put them on two different rocks and soon they'll be joining once they're acclimated and I raise them up to a little bit higher on the tank. They'll be put and glued down onto the Zoa rock. So now here's some close-ups of the corals. So Sit back and enjoy them, and as always, this is Scott, and I will talk to you soon around the reef tank.